just set it back a little bit. Yeah. So they can Hi everyone. You know what? There's only a little space in the world. Hi. Hello. Sorry, we're just seeing if we could block some of the noise. Oh, sure. Is there a door there? There isn't. No. There isn't. Okay. So you're going to have to be loud. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> Like, uh, I, I, I will go like this. Like, okay, yeah. Can everyone, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yeah? Okay, great. I'll, I'll, I'll try to project as much as possible. Um, Are you going to be using the screen? No. Oh, good. No, I'm not going to be using the screen. No, we need to look at you then. Yes. <laughs> so, as everybody knows, I'm James Sklar, and I'm here tonight to talk about organic food and the dangers of GMO. So, I got interested in organic food back in 1996 when I moved to San Francisco. Uh, I grew up in a small town outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm a Western boy, so I was raised on meat, more meat, and dairy. So that's how I grew up. I was, uh, I was a heavy kid, but I was into sports, and when I got to San Francisco, I was in a lot of pain. So I flipped open the yellow pages and I was trying to find some type of help. And I found a nutritionist who I was introduced to in San Francisco who introduced me to organic food. And I always thought organic food was that little wormy apple in the back of the store. I never thought of it as being something that was healthful. I, was, I always thought it was something to avoid and those weird dirty hippies were buying the stuff. So why would I buy that? So he took me to Whole Foods in San Francisco and it was just like the pearly gates opened up for me. I was like, ah! And everything there, this is a 96, everything there, <laughs> my old ways died, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I got you. And so it's, it was a beautiful experience. Everything in this place was organic. It was local. It was just wonderful. So I immediately took to it just because it tasted so good. It looked so good. And after I ate it, I felt so good. So I was hooked. So this is in 1996, and that was it for me. So, why organic food? Well, let me start off by saying that in 2002, the, federal, the USDA set a federal standard for what organic is. And so what their guidelines are what's used now. When you pick up something in the store and stop a job or wild oats or wherever you go, there's that little seal. That's, that's a certified organic seal, and that is organic. And a lot of people say, well, how do you know it's organic? It just, it just says organic. Well, it's a federal standard. There are the USDA inspectors. There's less of them, but it is, a, it is a federal standard. And what that means is the organic products cannot contain any synthetic fertilizers, any kind of chemicals, any kind of toxic sludge. Sorry for eating. Any, and furthermore, no GMOs, no steroids, no hormones, and no, no vaccinations for all the animals. So it's, it's a much healthier choice. And the reason it's healthier, obviously it's because it's not sprayed, there's no treatments, there's no chemicals in it. But there's been numerous studies to show that organic food has, on average, 25% more vitamins and minerals and stuff that's healthy for you than, than its conventional counterpart. Plus, what I think is most important about organic food, organic food does not contain anything genetically modified. And I feel like that, that is critical. And to me, it's especially important with the animals, for the people that do eat meat. I, I'm definitely a meat eater. So you take chickens, for example. Organic chickens are fed a, a, a healthy diet. They're allowed to roam. There's no kind of hormones. There's no vaccinations and no chemicals you know, with, with those chickens. Secondly, uh, I feel bad because people are, I don't know it's eating beef right now, <laughs> it's okay. But um, the, the cattle, unfortunately, the beef that are raised conventionally are, in, are confined. They're constantly given hormones, estrogen, they're given vaccinations, and all those things that are put into meat, whether it's chicken, uh, beef, or produce, that goes into your body. You're putting all that stuff into your body. And yes, there is definitely an impact organic food. I mean, if you have a conventional food, there's a big impact in your body. So, I, you see a lot of the time in stores, you see products that are natural. Natural, 
it's bullshit, I'm sorry, but it's, it means nothing. It's purely a marketing term. And they feel like, you know, the natural products will, you know, people that buy organic, ooh, it's natural. Natural means nothing. Natural can mean that it's made in a plant in New Jersey. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean a, a thing. So it's, uh, it's just, uh, it doesn't mean anything. So I just wanted to touch on that. Is that a natural mean it wasn't, there's something in the processing of it that's been added? No, it means nothing. It means absolutely, absolutely nothing. nothing. <laughs> you know, so so it's something that I tend to avoid because there's no standard, there's no guideline, there's nothing that that, that sets natural apart from anything. It's just pure stupidity. Uh, something that I did want to briefly touch on uh, is last fall, Stanford came out with a study, Stanford University, I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, that came out last September saying that conventional food is no different than organic food. Well, what they failed to mention in that study is that those scientists are funded by giant agribusinesses and companies that have a direct stake in producing conventional foods. And that study was not, uh, no, no journalist did any type of fact checking in that study. It was filled with flaws and it just went right through to the conventional media, right through to our ears and eyes, and it means that study meant nothing. There are numerous studies showing that organic food is healthier, it tastes better, and it's better for you. So that's my spiel on organic. Now, this, now comes the scary part, GMOs. So I wanted just to read to you. I'm going to try not to read too much, but I feel like this is really important. So everyone, I'm sure most people here have heard GMO, genetically modified organisms. I'm going to say GMO because genetically modified organisms it's hard to say even so, it's hard, it's hard to say that, that, that phrase. So here's the exact definition. So GMO is the result of a laboratory process where genes from the DNA of one species are extracted and artificially forced into the genes of an unrelated plant or animal. Foreign genes may come from bacteria, viruses, insects, or even humans. So. GMOs are banned in Europe, they're banned in Australia, Japan, and in 40 other countries. They're not banned here. So, something I'll, I'll get back to, but there's, in, in California, there's something called Prop 37, which was to label all genetically modified organisms that are found in, in foods. That proposition was defeated. It was defeated by companies mostly based in Europe. Monsanto gave the most money obviously, but a lot of companies like Unilever, which owns Ben & Jerry's, they fought hard against labeling genetically modified organisms. Ben & Jerry, I mean, they, I don't get it, but, but they, they fought that tooth and nail. There are other right to knows, and Jane brought a little pamphlet you can take with you, which is the mass right to know, and it's certainly something to, to check out and be involved with. So, the foods that, are, that contain GMOs, I'm just going to talk about crops for a moment. Soy, for example, 94% of soy that's produced in this country is genetically modified. 94%. And my heart broke when I was looking at my notebook, which is recycled, this and that. But then I looked down here, soy ink. So genetically modified, but I don't think I'm going to eat my, the pages of my notebook. So, <laughs> so in addition to soy, 90% of cotton produced in this country is genetically modified. 90% of canola and 95% of sugar beets. Any type of sugar that you eat that is not cane sugar, dehydrated cane sugar, genetically modified. Any oil, soy oil, cottonseed oil, canola oil, that is not certified organic is genetically modified. So most restaurants, I. I don't know about here, but most restaurants use soy oil, okay? I, I, it, because it's cheap and it's plentiful, yet it's genetically modified. Corn, 88% of corn produced in this country is genetically modified. Hawaiian papaya, if over 50% of Hawaiian papaya produced is genetically modified. And they're starting to plant zucchini and yellow squash, over 24,000 acres are genetically modified. So in addition to those, those crops, items like soy protein, soy lecithin, corn starch, corn syrup, and there's a host, there's dozens, I couldn't even print out on one page, this is for 
recycled paper and everything, but I've used two pages, and I have I have a bunch of copies here if you want to pick it up. These are all ingredients that are commonly found in foods that are genetically modified. The scariest thing on this list for me is soy lecithin, which you see if you buy chocolate, you look at the back, you want a chocolate fix, you look at the back, soy lecithin, genetically modified. Unless it's organic, it must be certified organic and not natural. So, why is genetically modified? Why are GMOs? I'm sure. Why are GMOs dangerous? You know. So, there are numerous animal studies showing that there's organ damage, gastrointestinal immune system disorders, accelerated aging, and infertility. In fact, I was listening to Jeffrey Smith, who I consider the foremost expert on GMOs. And uh, he was saying that in the third generation of these laboratory animals, they're completely infertile. Completely infertile. So that really scared me. There, there have been human studies, but they were stopped. What they found in these human studies were that when you eat genetically modified foods, they start to bind to the bacteria in your body, more specifically in your gut. And guess what? They never leave. They stay there forever. It's, and they also, the, the bacteria, the DNA in the genetically modified organism in your gut is self-replicating. So it's constantly, constantly, constantly going in your gut. There's no, absolutely nothing natural or allopathic that you can do to fight that. So, for example, uh, GM soy can transfer the, I just, well, yeah, I just mentioned that GM soy can transfer the DNA of bacteria living inside you. Furthermore, a toxic insecticide produced by GM corn was found in the blood of pregnant women and their unborn fetuses. Self-propagating GMO pollution will outlast the effects of global warming and nuclear waste by far. So that really scared the hell out of me. Plus, GMO crops have to be constantly sprayed to survive. And between 1996 and 2008, U.S. farmers sprayed an extra 383 million pounds, 383 million pounds of herbicides on GMO crops in this country. Roundup, yes. But was it the idea that vegan GMO, so they would, they had that herbicide to ready? prevent weeds? Yeah. Oh, now there's weed about resistant. The, oh, it, now it, we so have weird, sort of like a super bug they have in hospitals. They have super weeds now, so that are spreading like. So that, or one of the herbicides they used by Monsanto, uh, Roundup, Roundup Ready Crops, which I'm, maybe some of you have heard of, they've been linked to sterility, hormone disruption, birth effects, and cancer. So I, the GMO subject is such a huge, huge subject, and in 10 or 15 minutes, there is no way I could possibly cover every bit of material. But I would encourage you to sign up for Mass Right to Know, take this list, and be in touch. And I would love to open it up if anyone has any questions or anything that I, I could answer. So please, don't be shy. I would just like to have you touched upon how the GMO affects the gut. Yes. And that um, right now, and health in the field that I'm in, what we're seeing is that pretty much that's where all diseases start, right. is in the gut. That's exactly so right. that's like the impact really that it has when it comes around to it. Yeah, so what you're putting in your body if you're eating GM soy, GM corn, is not only does that replicate, but all what they're starting to do, Roundup Ready corn, Roundup Ready soy, has built-in pesticides. So if you're eating that, you're eating all those built-in pesticides, they're going into your stomach and possibly cause colon cancer and other types of cancer. It is scary. And to me, there's no more important issue than GMOs because... We have other environmental concerns, but GMOs are almost ubiquitous now. And if we don't, we just we need to label them. We need to give consumers the right to know. And the companies, see the companies that are they're spending millions to fight this. And what they're saying is it's going to cost the consumer more money. That was the biggest thing in California, Prop 37. They spend millions on, on TV advertising saying that. If you buy, you know, if we start labeling, well, the consumer's going to pay a lot of money. That's complete nonsense. There's nothing that proves that it's going to cost more money to the consumer. 
It's going to educate the consumer. It's going to cost them nothing. So if you're, besides buying organic, which of course is not going to have GMOs, you can look for the non-GMO verified product, which is a little little seal that you can find on products found in your store. So, are there any? GMOs have been out for nearly 20 years, right? They were first introduced in the 90s, in the mid 90s. The flavor saver tomato, and it was spelled F, like you know, without the E. It's spelled in a cool new way. But ones that have no taste at all. Ones that have no taste at all. But they lasted forever. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's actually, you bring, oh, sorry. But so anyway, but the question is, okay, so we got nearly you know, 20 years of history. Is there anything documented that affects the things? Yeah, there are, there are, there are many studies. That should, most of the studies are done in, in lab rats. Because okay, human but, but you got a human population that's been subjected to this for 20 years, let's say, right? There are, be yes. some effects showing up. There are, yeah, I mean, there are, there has been effects showing up. Cancers, diabetes. Because, because, is there, is there, you know, I raise all my own food because I don't like this stuff anyway. Most of what we eat for dinner is stuff that came off our farm. Right. But anyway, uh, it's a hard sell when you say, well, yeah, the cancer rates are up, and it must be the GMOs. But how do you, how do you, how do you relate it? How can you, how can you do that? Well, the human studies were, were they've, been, they've been stopped. There's not enough money for them. So what they're doing is they're studying them in lab animals. Well, who's doing the studies? There's numerous studies all over. Is the over. government doing this? No. Any, any no. independent agency? Even the government, independent. I don't know if they're independent. The government's doing nothing about it. Absolutely nothing about it. They're independent scientists doing the research. I'd just like to make a case for organic farming. Because I'm a How do you know it's safe? If you can't prove to us that it's safe, you can't put it on the market. Yeah. I just think it changes the questions it's asked. Right. Yeah, how do you prove it's safe? How do you do that? Well, we have to do that. I wouldn't be trying to put it on the market. But in the EU, they do that. Well, they, they just, yeah, they just say, they just say no. Well, the, the, <laughs> the, the, that is called the precautionary principle in that if you cannot prove that this will not, you know, damage you know, a person, then... But, but our government says, essentially, GMO is no different than commercially raised, which is well, no different than organic. But that's when what, you that's say what the statement they think, right? That's, that's what the yeah, government says. Yeah, but, but our government right says it's okay, yeah. but theirs says... Well, the, from that's Missouri, show me. The, the FDA, unfortunately, will take the documentation from the manufacturer Okay, because they do not do their own studies and will accept that as proof. But, you know, as, as you know, um, you've heard here, you know, uh, some of these scientists, you know, they, they jump between, you know, and, and even in the FDA, you, you can see they work, they work for Monsanto and they work for the FDA. And then they're, they're, they leave the FDA and they go back to Monsanto so, or these other companies. So who can you really trust? You know, you, you can't. And in, in terms of what the government will say about it, if you take something like pasta, it's a toxic safety product, toxic substance control product, the government has not been able to put many chemicals on the prohibited list. Because when a manufacturer asks for a permit to get it out in the market, EPA has 90 days to prove that it's not safe. They have not been able to get anything else on that list. The is a, is a joke as far as the industry is concerned. Because... So, but you have evidence that, that for instance, Roundup has issues, right? Oh yeah. But Roundup is it approved? Uh, I'm sorry. But that, right? Yes. And then that's your saying, point, I guess, yeah. right there. What I'm after, saying. After, after, so after 90 days, you're good to go? No, no, no. That's, well, that's different. That one has been covered. You've been covered on the cost. What I'm saying is that we're asking the wrong question. Instead of asking, how do you know it's not safe? We should be asking the manufacturers, how do you know, before you introduce it to our entire population, 
How do you know what you're saying? That's the perfect Let me tell you a little anecdote. Let me let you in on something. So, this is not necessarily to do with GMOs, but it's, 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 it's equally as important. So, when you pick up something in a store, a box of cereal, you look on the back, you know, sugar, carbohydrates, vitamins, and everything like that. Well, guess what? There's nobody regulating any of that, any of that data on there. When, I, when we were living in Los Angeles, I started a cookie company. And I wanted on the back of the cookies to say, because I really wanted them to be low sugar, and healthy, and, and that sort of thing. So I wanted to have them tested. It cost a thousand dollars to have that full panel on the back. And I sent them off to the lab. The lab tests them, and they come back with a PDF of calories per serving. But guess what? Who's telling me what I can send them? The sample I can send them, I could, they're not going to eat them. I, I could put in no sugar, and it's going to come back to me saying zero grams of sugar, 25 grams of carbs, whatever it is. There is nobody regulating any of that data on any food packaging, period. So, so in other words, no one's going to your processing facility exactly. and taking a sample and right. saying right. that and verifying that what's on that label right. Right. Exactly. Is, is what you're producing. The, the labels, exactly. The labels on the back of food products mean nothing. I mean absolutely nothing. <laughs> they mean, it mean, it means the sample that was submitted is... You can send any sample, right. You can send any sample you want. I mean, the problem is, yes. That's why I say, there's a label, don't eat it. If there's a label, don't eat it. Okay. Okay. non barcodes. No barcodes. And some people, I don't know if you've heard of this, but some people, some people tend to look at the barcode to see which number it starts with to see if it's, I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. But some if it's a five, it's or whatever it is, that means nothing to it. There's no, that means absolutely nothing. Just wanted to spell that I, I have one comment to make about sure. the environmental implications of human genetic Because we're living on a planet of seven billion people and we need to feed those seven billion. It's, right. it's a fact. Right. Um, unfortunately, we have identified genetically modified organisms as a means to feeding all those people. Right. Um, what happens is that when you, the reason, a large reason that we genetically modified organisms is so we can grow them in massive uh, monocultures. Uh, normally, if, if these organisms weren't modified, um, you would be you would be dealing with pests, pests upon pests. But they they modify the gene so that they can spray Roundup over and over and over. Well, Roundup won't hurt. The kills everything hurt except the plant. Right. Kills everything else. So so uh, we're introducing all these toxins from the from the uh, herbicides, from the pesticides, and we're also reducing biodiversity. It's it's just genetically modified organisms lead to monocultures. Monocultures are terrible for the environment. Well, then is the issue with the pollen drift from GMO? Sure. Right. The They're starting to grow wild now. So they discovered crops in various states in the West that are well, they're, they're growing wild, wild genetically modified organisms. But there was a study recently, I was going to talk about this, that was authored by more than 400 scientists and backed by 58 different governments that determined that the GMO crops for world hunger have nothing to offer. The yields, don't, the yields aren't there. They don't help. But they hurt biodiversity. And for example, in this country, since the introduction of GMOs, they found that the population of monarchs have gone down 50%, just, just for example. Well, and I want to play off of what Richie was saying, you know, about. Uh, oh, uh, what Richie was saying about, um, uh, you know, the, the spring, the, the reasoning why these crops are developed. And, and, you know, the, the marketing aspect of feeding the world was the key, but that's not what the key was. Okay? The key is the fact that Monsanto, by genetically modifying the seed, could then patent it. Okay? Until that actually happened, until they got that passed by, uh, by our federal government, seeds could not be patented. That was a right of every human being to be able to see, save that seed, plant that seed, do whatever they want to do with it. But once they modified it with, with some genetic you know, mu mutation, I, I gotta say, that, that they could patent that and claim it. And, and now when you're looking at 
you, you mentioned that the high percentage of, of soy, the high, 90 plus percent of soy, 90 percent plus of corn, which is in not only 90 percent of the products that we all eat, if they're processed in any way, but also the beef, um, poultry, pigs that we eat are fed the same genetically modified uh, 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 material, you know, they are, um, they are devastating the world's uh, food supply by contaminating it with their modified, um, patented products, and they're also suing people over the fact of using it. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, and these same companies are storing heirloom seeds, and I think it's in Norway. I don't know if, you, if, if anyone here has heard of that, but there, there's a huge seed yeah. bank yeah. somewhere. They're, they're in the U.S. Too. They're in the U.S. too. Okay, okay. So, um, does, I think you, you have a question. Yeah, I was wondering when the last time you had a GMO was. The last time I had yeah, one. Yeah, well, when's your last <laughs> I don't know. Can you, not, can you really know? Yeah. yeah. Can I really know? Oh, when you had to drink, have a beer? Probably was in there. I didn't yeah. actually. I didn't have anything. Well, I'm saying it's all full of grain, right? It's liquid right. grain. But right. it is liquid grain. But there are organic beers. You know, yeah, there's organic. <laughs> not here. Yeah, yeah, you're right though. You're yeah, right. there's organic wine uh, at, at our restaurant. We uh, all our wine was organic or biodynamic, which I feel is even better than organic. Well, what's the difference? Uh, yeah. Biodynamic is a self-containing ecosystem, meaning that. There's never a need for any type of, because sometimes when I say pesticides, there are natural pesticides. You know, you can use cayenne pepper, there's all sorts of natural pesticides. But something that's biodynamically grown is, a, like I said, it's a self-contained ecosystem. So this is a vineyard in California, Lalonis. It's a wine that's produced, it's got a bunch of lady, ladybugs on it. And they were the first to pioneer the use of ladybugs to kind of get rid of all the pests that were in in their vineyard, and they, it's, a, it's a beautiful wine, and, and they started it, and you know, you, you can have your own, uh, whether it's a farm or vineyard, whatever it is, that you don't need pesticides, you, of, any, of any kind, really. So that's, so it's basically creating a diverse environment, sort of like a food chain, so one animal or one pest eats the other. So you have no need to come in and spray with anything, even if it's organic. So I, 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 I find that to be amazing. Yes, a beautiful woman in the back. <laughs> is it, uh, with biodynamic, does it uh, go with the cycles of the moon or something I heard? Like, or, uh, yeah, something to yeah, that? there's some people that subscribe to that, the Rudolf Steiner school, where they, uh, in the farms, they plant a horn filled with crystals, and they put it into the ground. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of that. There's a whole host of new agey, I mean, it's kind of a trite term, uh, word that's used on these, on these farms where they go around, they spread the crystals, there's blessings. They're really harmonious with nature, and it's a really, really beautiful thing. So, yeah. Definitely. So, are there any more the, questions? One of the things that concerns me, you, know, you talk about the high percentage of soy in, 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 in our practice, you know, uh, yeah, there are a lot of people that are looking at, at vegetarianism and veganism, right. and and that's a great concern to us for two reasons. One, a person needs to be really conscious of, of that decision because of, of right. the proteins that, uh, and the amino acids that their their body needs and that they need to consume, and um, a good portion of those uh, uh, are drawn from soy. Mm -hmm. uh, soy or, or certain uh, legumes, uh, and those being genetically modified, it, 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 it just seems like you know they're trying to do something good for themselves, but yet the system is working against them. Because if they're trying to consume large quantities of soy to, to maintain that protein level and those amino acids, um, in another sense, they're poisoning themselves. Yeah, I mean tempeh. I mean all soy. I mean unless it's organic, unless it's organic. And and to find organic soy, really, when you're talking ninety-eight percent of soy being produced, being genetically modified, you know, I mean, where's that two percent, you know, coming from? There are producers that that do organic, and then you can find them in wild oats or whole foods or. If you've been stop and shop, I haven't looked, I haven't bought tofu in kind of a while. But, but uh, orga you can find organic, but the problem again, even with the organic stuff, is the GMO, I think you might have mentioned that, the pollen, it blows over. There's no, they're not contained, these organic farms are not contained. 
and they can very easily spread. I don't know what can be done in the future about that. I mean, I don't know if you could build like a dome or like a biodome or something, but it's something has to be done. But, but to me, I think what the, the tipping point really is here is to label them. I think that's so important to give consumers that knowledge because most do, most consumers want to know. The government thinks we're all stupid and we don't care. We just want to watch a real housewife and, you know, whatever. You know, so it's just, and they're trying to dumb us down constantly. So I feel that we are, we are smart. We are a smart population and we do want to be educated. And it is, to me, so important to buy organic. And one thing I just like to touch on briefly, the reason organic food tastes better, you're tasting all the vitamins, you're tasting the enzymes, you're tasting all those bioflavonoids, that, you know, the new buzzword. You're tasting the goodness that's in that food that's good for you, so it tastes better, so, so why not? And another quick thing is that people always say organic food costs more. But it does cost more, but, but, but think about what you're getting. You're getting something beautiful for your health. You're impacting the environment. And to me, there's so many wonderful farms around here, so many beautiful farmers producing organic food. And it really can be a symbiotic relationship between you and that farmer. And I think I just, having the restaurant, I love supporting farmers. I love all the farmers in the Berkshires. There's so many great choices. So there, it's, it's out there. So just wanted to touch on that. Oh. Canada. Is Canada following uh, Europe and Japan or uh, following America? Not that I know of. I think they're mostly following America. They're kind of our little, little like Asia, Asia is probably the same thing. China, well Japan does not have any GMOs as far as and I China know, but China, yeah. That's a lot. yeah. How do you know, if you, if you have your own backyard garden, how do you know the seeds you're buying from whoever? Aren't GMO? If they won't label the food, right. they labeling the seeds. If it's GMO, heirloom seeds or, or certified organic seeds. That's the best you can do. If you buy it from the regular seed guy, there may be a um, potential there that they well, could be. I, I doubt that they're going to invest in the research to genetically modify a seed and then. Oh, they will. They just buy it from somebody else. Well, I mean, if 98 percent of the whatever of the corn. There's a lot of people producing corn seeds, right? Not just right. There's a lot of people. All the sugar beets, essentially all sugar beets are right. Yes. Essentially all soy. All sugar. I mean, I grow soy. I grow corn. I, you know, the, is that the seed? Thing, the, there's, there's a whole list of where you can get seed that is specifically not. I mean, is somebody testing the DNA in this? But the, the no, thing with like the corn do. statistics is that we are growing corn for fuel. We're growing corn for high fructose corn syrup. We're growing large quantities of corn, not for. Yeah, and the corn GMOs and were targeted to do that. Right? Yes, exactly. That's what they were. The corn that you're looking to grow is not. You won't even want to eat that corn that's trying to be modified. It doesn't taste like corn. It's F2 corn. It's it's genetically modified. It's 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 alien corn. Yeah, but you know it, it's not sweet corn. <laughs> right now, <laughs> the, the package of seeds says you know hybrid anyway. If it's yeah. yeah hybrid, it'll say hybrid, which tells you don't bother planting the seed from the what you yeah. plant because they won't produce yeah. the same thing again, right? So there's a there's pretty, pretty much a dead ended situation anyway, right? You got to keep buying seed. It's hybrid seed. It's not it's either sterile or it's produces something that's not very productive. I say look for organic. That, that would be my answer. Yeah, so certified organic certified has organic. to be non-GMO. It has to be non-GMO. I mean, yeah, it does have to be non And then again, that non-GMO that, 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 that non, uh, non verified project, it's got a little seal. Look for that. They're super strict and they're, they're a wonderful organization, non-profit organization that does do the research and you can, I feel like you can trust them. But I wonder if they are indeed testing for the, for the wind drips or the pollen and things. I think that, that's a DNA test. It, you know, it, there are drips and it's going to happen, but I mean, how much can you really do? Uh, you, I just yeah. have to, the question is, if you buy you need a certified organic seed, right. has it been tested to determine it's been, it's been certified and tested by the USDA. That, that's, that's who labels it. That's who does it? Yes. No, that doesn't give me a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> well, it is a federal standard. That's, yeah. James, you started out by by talking about Whole Foods and your introduction to um, to Whole Foods. Right. Real, real Whole Foods. Um, 
And uh, I don't know if you noticed the uh, announcement this week that Whole yes, Foods. Yes, I did see that. Yeah, Whole Foods has announced that uh, any of their products uh, by 2018, 2018 um, need to be labeled. Uh, otherwise, they will not accept them. Right. The label that they contain GMO products. Yeah, that's really one. Thank you for mentioning that. I, the co CEO, I think his name is Walter Cobb. I don't know if that sounds right. Um, he's the one that brought that out. I think that's really, really going to change the game uh, in terms of labeling GMOs. Why they're picking 2018, I have no idea. I know that a lot of organ organic, organic consumers association that's pressuring them to do by 2015. But um, at least it's a major step forward, and it does send a very strong message. Obviously, Whole Foods is a giant company, and they're almost everywhere. I wish they were on. But um, they, yeah, it's a really, really great step forward. I'm really excited about that. And just because Prop 37 was defeated in California, there are other, there's one in Washington, there's one in Hawaii. There's now there's been a bill introduced in Congress by a member in, I think, Colorado and Florida. I, was, I can't remember the number of the House bill, but that's been introduced in Congress. Because I think it's not a, not going to be a state by state thing that's going to do it. It's going to be a federal thing that's really going to that's really get that moving as far as labeling goes. So yeah, it's exciting. So I'm not a farmer, but I know farmers and farmers around here and in the area. They tell me it's very difficult to grow apples without using some some sort of pesticide or something of the sort, an herbicide, something like that. You know, it's very modern. These apples, they're great apples, you know, they're more or less, you know, native. And they've been here for a long time, and the guy's been doing it for the longest of times. But that's one instance where I think the organic rule of thumb, you know, buy organic, might kind of falter a little bit. And I know a lot of organic apples are also grown in deserts because you don't have to apply pesticides, herbicides, but you have to, you know, crazy irrigation patterns to get those to grow. So that might be one time the rule of thumb fails. Are there any other instances where there's a certain product that may actually be better not to buy the organic one? Well, I found something funny um, when we made the restaurant. One thing on the menu was bison. Uh, I love bison. And uh, we bought it, we were buying it from a place in New Jersey. I found out they couldn't be certified organic because they didn't have the right fence. So because they didn't have the right fence, they couldn't be certified organic. So I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I mean. I love organic, but when it's local and you can go to the farm, because it does cost a significant amount of money, thousands of dollars, to certify something organic. But when you go to a farm, and maybe they're not necessarily organic, but you can see what they use, you can taste the food. To me, that's the best possible experience that you can have. And you can, you know, apples do need something, but they don't have to be synthetic. They can use a natural pesticide for that. Uh, so that's that is possible. So there are little little things like that, but I mean, I always I would say buy organic, but to me local usurps organic because a lot of these little farms, and in fact any farm that I believe is selling less than five thousand under five thousand in sales does not have to be certified organic, even their organic practice. They say that a lot organic practicing wines. You've ever seen that in a store? Or sustainable wines. I feel like if they're going to do that, they're they're committed. You know, they're committed to it. I, I think, like I said, the best thing to do is visit that farm and see what they do, talk to the farmers, and look at a good sense of the What's the rule on, on somebody with livestock using antibiotics and veterinary purposes? Is there some sort of a supposed to use antibiotics? No, it could not be organic if they're using antibiotics. So you'd actually have to withdraw that from your herd? Yeah, you can't. I think there's a certain time period where you, you know, you, you can't have that animal involved in, in the herd. Yeah, but you can't. I mean, all the cattle and all the chickens or whatever is that no hormones, no antibiotics, uh, no vaccine. They, they're also heavily vaccinated. A lot of these animals are very heavily vaccinated, so that can't be. They can't be certified organic. They use any of those products. So. Is that a question? So, so, oh. I'm not familiar with Whole Foods, is it? So apparently not everything at Whole Foods is organic. No, no. A lot of stuff there is a lot of stuff there is conventional. I mean they've really changed. But, um, but is it by definition if it's if it's identified as organic, therefore it can't be GMO anyway, so why would Whole Foods say so well, I, just, I, I could say something about that. I mean, I, like any, it's not even the food. It's like beauty products and lotions and sauces. And I mean, it's just like 
what he was saying about the oils, like soy oil, like it's in everything. Like I was looking at my so my, just my beauty products, my makeup, my my lotion on my body, bath oils, like you know. So I guess for them to start labeling absolutely everything they sell might take absolutely that amount of time. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, but I mean it's a lot. Yeah, it's like every day. That's a great point. Yeah. They do it for Europe. Yeah, they're ahead of the game. So I have here, if anyone's interested in scaring themselves, um, I have a list of invisible gene ingredients contained in most foods. And like you mentioned, the soy. Soy is a binder, and the, you know, so that's contained in so many different products, from makeup to chocolate, all sorts of food. So I have that here, if anyone's interested. And I do believe we have the Jane brought the mass right to know, so I strongly encourage you to get involved in that. And I think um, if anyone gets a hold of me, I think uh, my email is on the sheet there somewhere. What's the what's the restaurant? Well, we sold it. It was oh, um, it was called Bloom okay. in uh, Hastings on the Hudson, which is in Westchester, New York. And uh, it was it was a labor of love and stress and. <laughs> well, it was quite, a, quite an interesting experience, but yeah, I saw that. James, what, what, why don't you explain what you're doing now? Oh, so what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm out of the food field, and I'm, I'm getting involved in uh, real estate. Uh, so I'm really interested in green buildings, green real estate, uh, all that sort of thing. So uh, anyone know about any real estate you want to buy or sell? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> But um, I'm, I'm super, super passionate about organic. I, I am that. I, I eat organic. We can come over to our house and look into our fridge, and that's that's what's there. So I'm not just I'm not just talking about it. We're just we're about it. So um, I thank thank you so much for letting me speak, and thank you thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Sure, you know, sure. Would, would that be good? Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so much for, oh, for coming tonight. Really. Oh, thank you. Right. That was, that was fun.